welcome back to my channel this is Dom and the start of a new project for me uh, yeah as if I didn't have enough projects on the go but uh, I'm blaming a couple of people for this um, I'm blaming Nick at British Legion um, and some other uh, community subscribe or community contributors um, and I'll explain why in a minute I'm also blaming Ken at uh, miniature war games warriors um, so what am I trying to do with this project? I am trying to build a small force of um, troops I can use in my Napoleonic games um, it, or somebody else can use against my British uh, or allied troops in, in Napoleonic games. Now one of the things I've realised since lockdown and the restarting of gaming in outdoors and in my garage and what have you and Ken's come up to play a couple of games and the problem is he doesn't have any Napoleonics um, and I only have allied Napoleonics. I have a couple of regiments of Brit uh, French, don't tell anyone, um, but I don't have enough to, to field an army. Um, and it got me thinking, I really should start to have a few other troops to be able to use. Um, and so it's Ken's fault uh, that I'm going to start this style, um, this, this project. But as I've always said, um, I don't have many rules in Wargaming, but one of them is I don't play French. So I couldn't build a French army. Um, and I thought, well, what can I do? And again, one of the things you will know if you listen to some of my rambles in the past, um, I kind of got into Wargaming when I was around about 10 or 11 years old because I went back to a friend's house after school and his dad had an, a collection um, of 15 mil Napoleonic figures where he was recreating every single regiment, squadron, battery um, of the Confederacy of the Rhine from the Napoleonic Wars. And I was completely blown away by it. It was just so stunningly spectacular. And the beauty of the Confederacy of the Rhine is A, it's not French, it's German. Um, and B, um, every single nation or um, city-state or duchy had different style of uniforms and different coloured uniforms. So it's a very visually stunning uh, formations um, that you can you can have um, based on the French, um, French organisation and French systems. So when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, you know what? This all came together um, and I thought I am going to start another project and I'm going to build a formation from the Grand from the um, Confederacy of the Rhine. Now when I looked into what shall I do, I've got some Nassau troops that I have as part of my uh, allied um, sharp practice army and uh, black powder army and they can be swapped across and used with the uh, with this project. Was so That's exciting. Uh, reuse figures. Um, but also um, as I mentioned, one of the things I loved, I've been loving seeing, is the uh, Vitrix uh, Imperial Guard French Lancers. Uh, Nick, is your fault amongst others. Um, and they just look absolutely stunning figures, and I fell in love with them. And I've always liked Lancers. I think it's those days of reading about the uh, Charge of the Light Brigade and, and all this kind of stuff. But Lancers fascinated me. But the Allied Army can't have them in the Napoleonic period. Well, sorry, the British side of the Allied Army. Um, Prussians and Russians do, and I think even the Austrians do. Uh, but the British don't. Um, and so I've never had the opportunity to model and build um, Lancers, and then I saw those Vitrix figures and I knew I had to do it. So a little bit of, and I knew that uh, one country or one nation within the Confederacy of the Rhine fielded Lancers as part of their formations, and that is this one, the Grand Duchy of Berg, or Cleveberg as it's often known. And so that became very easy for me to uh, decide what army I was going to build from the Confederacy of the Rhine. And what I'm going to do, and this is a tip for anybody looking to get into Napoleonics, is going to start small. I'm going to start building the formations out so I can use them as sharp practice troops because I only need a few formations for that. Um, and then as uh, I build the force out, then potentially they could be used for black powder or for other bigger scale games. And that's what I thoroughly recommend you do. Start small, start the skirmish end or the small scale battles and build up to the bigger battles. 
So a quick history of Berg and why um, why you may have heard of parts of this country or this uh, duchy. Um, Confederacy of the Rhine generally was formed uh, after Napoleon's victory against the Austrians and the Russians at the Battle of Austerlitz in 1805. Um, as a way of uh, maintaining his strength in Europe and weakening the Allies, he broke up um, all the different stations, all the little nations that were in Germany at the time. And Germany wasn't a united country like it is today. Um, it had um, a couple of big states, Prussia, Bavaria being two of them. Um, but the rest of it was made up of lots of little states, um, sometimes even down to city states, just the city and the surrounding countryside. That was it. Um, and so Napoleon um, was a canny operator and he basically formed the Confederacy of the Rhine as a sort of bulwark. Uh, against um, the P Prussians and the Austrians and the Russians. Um, and this became a sort of Germanic um, body of, uh, of troops for him to draw on. And a number of these armies and formations saw action in his battles right across the rest of Europe um, during the rest of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, now, Dushi, uh, the Duchy of uh, Berg itself uh, was located, located here. Let me blow up this map. Um, it was here on the sort of border of what is Holland and uh, France and Germany. It's not particularly big territory, um, but its capital is Dusseldorf in Germany nowadays. Um, it was formed initially um, in 1806 um, and uh, the first sort of uh, uh, Duke of Berg was somebody a lot of his lot of Napoleonic fans will be familiar with Joachim Murat, yeah that guy. Um, he became the first du uh, prince, oh sorry, first duke of the Duchy of Berg, um, and he controlled the country from 1806 uh, until he became king of no Naples in 1808. And at that stage, Napoleon took charge of the, of the duchy directly before he then appointed his nephew, um, Prince uh, Louis Bonaparte, um, as the duchy in um, 1809. So it had a long and, variety, uh, long and varied history, and it, it, it stayed in existence until um, the Napoleon was defeated for the first time at the Battle of the Nations at Leipzig in 1813 and then the territory was uh, handed over and administered to, by Prussia and eventually broken up. Um, so it's it's an interesting state it's a small it's one of the smaller confederacy but it has a decent number of troops which is one of the reasons why I picked it. Um, it also has some interesting uniforms and of course it has those lancers that I wanted. So talking about lancers, here we go. Uh, you can see that they were colourful fellas. Um, certainly in the early days, they had this pink and white uniform. But also, there's this green and pink uniform. I suspect the period I'm going to go for is about uh, 1811, and I believe at that stage they became green and pink, um, which is slightly disappointing because I think this pink and white is actually quite fancy, quite fun. Um, it was a very effective unit. At various stages it was transferred to the Imperial Guard or at least attached to the French Imperial Guard um, and you know, was a very effective cavalry unit. And I want to play it and I want to use it. So they're going to be Victrix figures, um, but that's the cavalry. Infantry wise they had um, a total of four regiments of foot. Um, they were all pretty much um, uniformed the same way. This white uniform, white trousers, white uh, coat with uh, pale blue uh, turnbacks and um, organised very much in the French style of things. So uh, I think it's two battalions per regiment plus uh, depot regiment for recruits. Um, organised uh, six companies of 120 men each. Uh, one Grenadier, one Voltiger, the rest Fusiliers. Um, so yeah, it should be quite interesting to model them. The the different regiments, only minor differences between them. Um, you know, just the odd turn back here that's different, but largely they were the same style uniform, which was largely a French uniform. 
um, but white and blue and pale blue was the was the unit was the color of all four regiments um, that, as in keeping with a lot of, um, uh, of different countries of this period the light troops the Voltigers had green plumes uh, the grenadiers had red they sometimes also had bear skins so I may well uh, model my grenadiers as bear skins um, and the line troops had pale blue uh, uh, plumes little bo uh, bobble ones as you can see they also had a regiment or a company of foot artillery who wore French style all blue uniforms and they had a horse artillery uh, company as well so quite a good size force four regiments each of two battalions um, each modeled all modeled on the fr same French style and and Berg was pretty active uh, the troops they they fought in a number of engagements um, 1809 in Germany they fought as part of um, uh, one of the French alongside one of the French but, um, companies or French uh, corps sorry um, and part of the Westphalian army as well. They fought in Spain. A um, number of their formations, I think pretty much the entire army at one stage or another, were involved in Spain um, from 1808 to 1812, 1812, 1813. Um, they also, uh, rather less successfully, um, fought in the 1812 Russian campaign. In fact, the entire army all four regiments of uh of feet a foot the cavalry the artillery all the support troops uh sappers engineers five thousand men uh fought in uh russia and at the end of that campaign it was disastrous for them they were largely annihilated they fought extremely well um, but they went from those four regiments down to just one regiment went from one regiment of cavalry down to one squadron um, and instead of two um, uh, battalions of artillery, they ended up with just two artillerymen. So it was absolutely disastrous. Um, and they never really recovered in time for Napoleon being um, uh, defeated at the Battle of Leipzig, which was the end of the Confederacy of the Rhine project. And um, by that stage, uh, Berg had recovered to a degree to, to field two battalions of infantry, but they were transferred to the Prussian army from there on in. So um, interesting formations, very interesting history, interesting uniforms. Let's have a look at the figures. So before we look at the figures, this is my reading material. So this is um, always a useful Osprey Men at Arms series. Uh, this is Napoleon's German Allies, book one. This is Westphalia and Cleveburg. Um, usual thing, lots of good plates and descriptions of the various uh, uniforms. There we go. They're all Westphalian, those ones. Here we go. This is there's the Lancers. Beautiful. Infantry. Really good books, good source books if you're looking for a, you know, a reasonable level understanding of the period or the army that you're looking to do first support of call is always good to go to Osprey so that's that and I've also got this book which is uh, a very old book of um, there's a two there's two editions there's one for the allied side and one's for the French side in fact there might even be more than that but um, uh, this is an old one I picked up in a um, car boot sale I think um, French version, as you can see, doesn't matter. Um, I can speak very basic French, but um, again, beautiful, beautiful um, pictures. This is Cleveburg. You can see the Grenadiers there. Number five is uh, these are Nassau. So uh, number one, where is it there? That's their artillery, chasseurs, a cheval, and Grenadier. Again, a little bit of description here in what they're about and their uniform colours. Here you go. These are 1806, telling you what they were wearing at that stage. So, really, really good and good old uh, Google. This is uh, flags and details about Berg troops I found somewhere.
So, good to get the research, know what you're going to do, and plan out the army. So, next figures. So, <clears throat> so already established, um, it's Nick's fault um, that I'm doing this army, and the fault of these wonderful lancers from uh, Vitrix. Um, this is the pack of uh, French uh, Napoleon Imperial Lancers, 12 models here in their usual plastic bag. And I am so looking forward to painting these. Really looking forward to doing them. So, they won't be first of all though. This, I'll be disciplined into the infantry first. So the core of the infantry is our friends, the Perry Twins. This is a box of French Napoleonic infantry. 44 um, figures for 20 quid. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, yeah, just... I'm going to try and build, I'll start with, um, so I've got 40, uh, 44 here, plus I bought some odds and sods extras, so I'm probably going to do um, a, a, a typical sort of uh, gr a group for sharp practice, which is what I'm going to start with, um, is 24, so three groups, um, so I'm going to do um, 48 infantry, and then I'll probably try and do a group of eight grenadiers, and then two units of Voltigers. That's what I'm gonna to aim to get out of all these troops I've got here. So to supplement the 48 um, in this box, I've been to my favorites, uh, other favorites is uh, Offensive Miniatures, and I've got a pack of, these are French line, uh, this Skirmishers, so that'll be the Voltigers. I've got two, ba two bags of those. Is that the other ones? Yeah, that's the other ones. So two bags of, of them, beautiful figures, and they they match very nicely with the Perry. And then I've got, uh, this is a command, metal command unit to go with the infantry, and just a regular uh, line company of six figures. So I think with these um, and the Perry's, that gives me, if I can work that out, 46, I can't work it out. But that should give me enough to do um, two dots of 24 line infantry, um, eight grenadiers, and 12 Voltigers. We'll see where we'll see what we've got left after that. That's the immediate plan for the army. So that's that lot done. Really, really excited to get going with that. Oh, also. While I was on hunting around on the interweb, found a company on eBay who does flags. So these are Cleveburg flags. What's good about this, I mentioned it earlier, but the, what's good about this army um, is that the regiments all pretty much look the same. And actually the flags all look identical as well. So first, second, third or fourth battalion um, regiments have virtually the same, so it's all good. So I've also, at the same time, I bought some off mounted officers from the Perrys. So um, they will be useful for the command units for the army because I'm planning to, well, I imagine there'll be a couple of foot uh, officers spare from the um, Perry box. So they'll be sort of secondary officers and these would be the sort of higher ranking officers. So there's uh, three of them in there, which is nice. And finally, FN17 is a gun. So I went for a foot gun just to provide some artillery support for this, this army. So, yeah, I think at the end of this, well, so the first stage of this project is going to be um, two battalions of 24 infantry, um, two lots of six Voltigers, a unit of eight Grenadiers, um, the Lancers, of course, a gun, and then associated officers. And that should see us into, well, I don't know, a couple of weeks down the line at least. And I am quite looking forward to getting underway with this. So there you go. That's my guilty secret, my next project. So I hope you found that interesting and entertaining. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and I hope you're doing well with your projects. I hope you're able to resist better than I am.
because I am crap at resisting, as everyone knows. Um, and this is almost my almost French army. So I'll see you again soon. This is Dom signing out. Thank <laughs> you.